Hello everyone and you're welcome. In our last lesson, we just did a basic introduction to categorical plots. This time around, we'll just go ahead and get our feet wet and have a practical session. So first, I'll just do my regular imports. I'll just import uh, matplotlib. Let me just make this a bit bigger. Dot .pyplot as plt. And I'll also import seaborn as sns. And I'll import, uh, I don't need to use pandas, so I'll just leave it alone. But in case you want to uh, load up your files using pandas, you can just go ahead and do that. But I won't be using uh, pandas. I'll also set our style using uh, sns.setStyle. And I'll use the, uh, let me just say the dark grid. I'm kind of using the dark grid so we can all see, you know, what we're doing. And I'll just quickly create a palette. I'll just set that to palette to uh, SNS dot color. I'll just call palette. And let's just set that to rocket. We can also create palettes on the fly and we'll see that as uh, examples. Also, what I'd like to do is to uh, put the matplotlib inline magic method. So I'm just going to say matplotlib inline so we can see our plots inline. So the first thing I'll do is to load our data. So I'll just say uh, load data and I'll be using the flights data set. So I'm just going to say df. Our data frame is going to be equal to sns dot load underscore data set and I'll load in the flights data set. Flights like that. And to make sure everything is running nice and smooth, I'll just run the uh, data frame and I should be able to see that uh, data frame. Uh, a good thing to do as a habit is just to load the uh, header. So I'm just gonna do df.head rather than hold the, uh, load up the entire data frame. So I can just see the first five uh, items and note the index starts from zero. So now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and create our uh, category plot using the uh, cat plot. So the first thing I'll do is to say uh, SNS dot cat plot, and I'll just make this a bit bigger so we can all see. And I'll pass in the data, which is going to be equal to the data frame we just created right now. And for my X axis, I'll just set that to month. And for the Y axis, I'll set that to the passengers. And let's just go ahead and run that. So now we can see we have the month and passengers all loading up. But another thing I'd like to show you is the uh, our X axis labels are all merged together. So let's see how we can go ahead and fix that. So to fix it, I'll be using a uh, method called the set underscore uh, X ticks labels. So to do that, I'll just make this and uh, create an object and save this. So I'm just going to say TT underscore plot, which is our categorical plot. And just right here, I'm just going to say CT underscore plot dot set underscore X tick. I think it's tick labels, not ticks labels, but let's just see that. So I'll set a rotation for the, uh, whoops. All right, rotation. I'll set it to a value of say uh, 45 degrees. And let's go ahead and run that and see. So uh, this actually seems to be uh, better. In case you're having uh, issues, you can try other uh, arguments, parameters, such as the horizontal alignment. So I'm just go ahead and press that. So I'll just say uh, horizontal alignment and I'll align it to the right. And if we kind of run that, we can actually see this uh, lined up. So uh, that's how we can create the um, uh, categorical plot. We can set a jitter value just so we can't see this uh, random uh, spots because it's if you kind of notice it, it's kind of like, you know, dist showing the distribution of that data. If you don't want that, you can actually use um, a jitter value. Right, so jitter value will let you see the uh, density. So let's go ahead and set the uh, jitter value. So right here, I'll just say comma, and I'll say jitter 
equals to false. And if we run this, we can actually see that we don't have that jittering. And also what I'd like to do is to use a uh, palette, which we created. So let's see, comma, palette is equal to palette. So if we run this, we could actually use the palette we created and we call this packet palette uh, rocket. If we go ahead and want to reverse this uh, palette, we could say rocket underscore R, which will reverse it. And if we get back here and run this, we should see a reversed version of our palette. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and look at the swarm plot. Now we can, uh, let's just go ahead and jump in. We can copy this like that. And let's just pick everything right here. And just right here, I'll just go ahead and paste this information. And I don't want the jitter, so I'll just get rid of the jitter like that. And let's see. Uh, all right, so for the palette, you can actually use another approach rather than use uh, that specific format, but we'll just leave the palette as uh, palette. So let's go ahead and just get rid of this and get rid of this. So we can just see our uh, plot. So rather than use cat plot, I'll just change this to swarm plot. And let's just go ahead and drag this because we have space so we can see everything and make sure uh, our method and our function is good. Just like that. And let's go ahead and just run that. So it said C1 has no module swarm. So let's go ahead and see what the problem And it's basically simple. It's a swarm plot, not swarm. So if we run that, we can actually see our uh, swarm plot showing up again. But this time around, we can actually see that without the jitter, this is actually showing in this uh, direction. If we go ahead and get rid of the palette also, we should have default uh, colors that it's using. Right, just like that. And uh, just like the last example, we can go ahead and fix this uh, real quick. But uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and move on. And what I like to do for the swarm, let's go ahead and use the year, right? Rather than use the uh, month, right? So let's go ahead and use the year and just right here, let's say year, All right? So let's just try using the year and we can actually have a, a better representation of that swarm using the uh, year category. I think I just feel it's uh, a bit much more uh, better when we use the year. So uh, let's go ahead and jump in and look at the box plot. To use the box plot, we're just gonna say SNS dot box plot and for the data, let's go ahead and pass in our df. Oops. Box plot. Our data, we're going to pass in df. Then for our x axis, I'm going to use month. For the x axis, for the y axis, my uh, keyboard is kind of jumpy. Sorry about that, guys. So for the y axis, I'll just say uh, passengers for our y axis. And let's just go ahead and run that. So we can actually see we have a uh, box plot. Now the uh, box plots will show a distribution of uh, quantitative data. And it shows the quartiles of our data set, right? So the whiskers are gonna extend down to the rest of the distribution. So these are our whiskers, and this shows us a quartile of our distribution. So, but before uh, we go ahead, let's go ahead and fix this, uh, you know, uh, matches right here where these are uh, there are these merges right here so i'll just zoom in one step and i'll just create an object to hold this reference i'll just call that object bxp and just like we did to fix that one we're going to pass in uh bxp dot set underscore x ticks labels and we'll set a rotation I'll just set that to 45 degrees. And it needs a label argument because uh, it needs a label argument. If you go ahead and run this, we'll run into uh, a kind of error and it says the axis has no uh, attribute set X ticks. So let's see, uh, X tick, not ticks. Sorry about that guys. So uh, it tells us it needs a labels argument. So I'll just use the uh, list of the uh, month for our labels. So I'm just gonna say labels 
it's going to be equal to our data frame for a month and this is supposed to be a string or else I'll get an error and then right here I'm just going to see uh, labels equals labels so we can actually get rid of this uh, error that is telling us that there's a missing argument called labels so this is how we can uh, kind of like fix our label for our bar plot and we can also see a list of this uh, information right so uh, let's go ahead and move on and let's look at the uh, count plot now the count plot is like basically like a histogram but it uh, it passes across categorical data data similar to the bar plot and to do our uh, box plot our count plot let's just say sns dot count plot and then we pass in the data which is our data frame and then for our x-axis so uh, let's go ahead and pass in uh, and yeah, let's see uh, passengers or oh, let's use a category uh, curl data and let's just say a uh, month and let's use the uh, palette to be equal to palette and let's go ahead and run this and we can see we have uh, that information that shows the month most likely month is not the best category to use for this distribution let's go ahead and try changing it to uh, passengers and we can see that uh, information all right so that definitely isn't the right uh, information to use so I'll just go ahead and switch this back to month just for uh, demonstrative uh, purposes just like that and to fix this we can still do the similar uh, uh, steps we took to fix the uh, label we can create an object get a reference and then set the X tick labels right so uh, we can actually do that to fix this so uh, but let's go ahead and look at one more uh, important data set which is the uh, violin uh, plot now the violin plot is a combination between the uh, combination of the box plot and a kernel density estimation it's called a kde estimation and basically it shows a uh, multiple distributions of data at once and the kde visualizes distribution of a data over a continuous time period now there is more information on kernel density estimation on the uh, wikipedia page you can read up on that just to get more extra info but basically what your kde will tell you is the distribution of your data over a continuous time period and you can actually see peaks let's just quickly have a uh, sneak preview of the uh, kde on wiki and quickly get back to our notebook so i'll just jump to my wiki and i'll just type kernel density estimation and we can actually see all that uh, definition so basically these peaks are the values we can actually use to get information of that uh, KDE and we can actually read up on all this uh, information right here so we can get more information on uh, what the uh, KDE is I'm not really worried about the math right now I just want to understand what KDE does and basically there's a summary of that way so it's a uh, estimate of the probability density function of a random variable and it's actually a smoothing uh, problem so uh, yeah that's it about KDE but let's go ahead and check out our violin plot so to do that let's go ahead and say sns dot violin plot whoops violin plot and then we'll pass in the data we want to plot so which is our data frame and we'll pass in the x axis we'll set that to a uh, month and then for the uh, y axis we'll set that to uh, passengers and then for our palette I'm going to create a uh, palette I'm going to use our uh, let's see which one do we use let's just use the hue lightness and saturation so it's going to be a sns dot color underscore palette and I'll pass in the uh, hue lightness and saturation value and I use a comma three for this and let's just go ahead and run that so you can see we have a, a violin plot but again we have um, 
the uh, x axis you know category it's kind of like merging our text so let's quickly uh, fix that so I'll create an object called VLP to hold a reference to our violin plot and here I'm just gonna see our VLP dot set underscore x tick labels and I'll set the uh, rotation to 45 and I'll just hit the labels equals to our labels so it can actually read the uh, labels so if you actually run that we can see we have our uh, violin uh, plot which shows us the uh, distribution of uh, data over our continuous time so it's uh, actually a bit tricky to read the violin plot rather than read the uh, box plot that just shows us the uh, quartiles so uh, the violin plot gives us the uh, KDE or merged in one it means it can add extra insights into our data so uh, thank you very much for watching guys and i'll see you in the next lesson